Hi guys, and welcome to Chateau Surf and Turf. We have a cracking menu in store for you today, so let's get into it. So in the container, you have your prawns and that fantastic Rayleigh butter. We're gonna keep that to the side for now. We'll get back to that after. We have our incredible piece of meat, the Chateau. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove it from the packaging. Any natural juices, let them drain off and we'll get it straight into a medium high pan, okay? Nice thick base on the pan so it conducts heat a lot better. Now you want your pan at a medium high heat and let's just remove this from the packaging. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put a tiny bit of oil into the pan. Okay, your medium high pan, a wee tiny bit of oil in there. And take some salt and season the steak all around. So you want every nook and cranny covered and that just a little bit of salt. Okay, you want to season everywhere. Okay. And place the steak away from you, straight into the oil. What you want to hear is that sizzle. And that's it. Okay, that you, when you hear that sizzle, you know that the pan is hot enough. It's a real top drawer piece of meat, the Chateau. The Chateau Brion. Normally in steak restaurants, it's served for two people to share. It is a lot of meat, but this is a real celebration for Fox, isn't it? You've got fantastic prawns, you've got an incredible couple of side dishes that you'll see in a second. Don't be scared of the pan. I understand that heat and the natural reaction is to be scared of the pan. However, the steak's not hot, okay? We want to treat it with the utmost respect. Gentle hands, we're not throwing it around. Some people do use tongs, and I do use tongs as well sometimes. However, it's a beautiful piece of meat. We're just, we're just going to calm down, okay? As you can see there, look at the caramelization. That's what you're after, okay? That's exactly what you're looking for on all sides. And if you find it's getting a bit smoky, then open the window, open the door, do what you have to do. You'll find that not every piece of meat is exactly the same, just like every person and every cattle isn't exactly the same. So this one's more of a barrel shape, but I've seen a lot of chateaus that are almost triangle shaped. So just make sure you seal them on all sides. Nature isn't always what you expect it to be. And look at that. So that's all sides, beautiful color. And that's going to go into the oven for between 15 to 20 minutes. And we are confident that that bad boy will be cooked perfectly at the end of it. Now the steak is ready to come out. And look at that. Oh, ho, ho. Look at that. A glorious piece of meat. We know it's ready. What that needs to do now, that needs to rest, okay? So I'm going to take it out of the pan and leave the actual pan on the heat. This is quite a critical stage of cooking. So in the pan, when you caramelized all that meat, you added flavor all around the meat. You also imparted some flavor into the pan. And we're gonna use that pan with the prawns. So while the steak rests, we're gonna cook the prawns in this pan. Now the butter is called Rayleigh butter and it's probably the best steak sauce you've never had, okay? Everything from this bag goes straight into the pan, okay? And that's it. That's what you want to hear. And you know that the prawns are ready when they start to go that incredible crimson red color. I mean, look, it started already, okay? So all of the flavor from the pan, all of the flavor from the steak, all of the flavor from the prawns, and now we are adding flavor from the Rayleigh butter. How can this not taste nice? You know, it's, it, you're almost guaranteeing yourself an outstanding dinner. Look at the, look at the color of those prawns already. Beautiful stuff. Keep moving the prawns around the pan. You want probably a medium, medium heat, not, not too high. Treat with respect, nice and gentle. Okay, with, with beef, you can, you can sear it, you can caramelize it. With prawns, let's just take our time. Let all of the ingredients merge. Within the Rayleigh butter, there's garlic, there's tarragon, there's parsley, some anchovies in there. So it really is a brilliant sauce to go with prawns and to go with the beef. Now, I mean, look at the color of those prawns. Brilliant, okay? Keep that to the side. And that is what's going on top of our steak. Now, for the carving of the steak, we have really taken care of this piece of meat. We've caramelized it around the outside, we've seasoned it, we've let it rest, we've cooked it. Now we have, to the side, 
are incredible prawns. I mean, look at them. They're vibrant, they're pungent, they smell fantastic, and that sauce as well, okay? So we're going to carve this piece of meat. What we're going to do, what we're aiming for, is six or seven slices all the way, okay? Three each, one for the chef, as always. So with a sharp knife, you want to carve lengthways through the meat. And that's, that's what you're looking for, that there. Ruby pink colour. Lovely stuff. Look at it. Beautiful piece of meat from a beautiful animal. Ready for dinner. Now lay the steak onto your plate, your serving plate. Incredible. <laughs> I'm almost jealous. Season it with some of the salt blend. And then, finally, what you want to do is you want to put this incredible, look at the cut, look at these prawns. You want to put them over and around and all of that incredible sauce. Really butter is something that's uh, gone out of fashion in the past couple of years, isn't it? I think it's, it's got to come back. You can't always have the same three sauces with steak. This is outstanding. I mean, look at that. That is beautiful. Beautiful steak, beautiful prawns. Nah, this sauce really takes it to the next level. Dynamite, absolutely dynamite. Okay guys, there is your incredible Chateaubriand topped with those prawns and that amazing relly butter. Enjoy. So for the second side, I'm really proud of this. This is a fantastic way with potatoes. So we're going to open the packet and in the packet you'll see there is a bright red butter. Now that butter is almost our dressing for the potatoes. So we're going to heat the potatoes up and just a wee touch of water, let them steam. And then we're going to add in that butter and that butter is going to coat them. So medium sized pan goes on. I've got a tight fitting lid just to ensure that the potatoes steam well. I'm going to just add a little touch of water to get them started. That's all we really need. We don't need crazy amounts, okay? So the potatoes are in, place the lid on top, let them steam. They're only going to take about between two and three minutes. They're already cooked, you're not cooking them from raw. They're already cooked, you're just warming them up, okay? So that's our potatoes done. That's been two minutes. There's a tiny little bit of water in the bottom there. I'm just going to allow that to steam. Okay, and now is the point to add in this butter with potatoes. This is outstanding. Lid on, leave it for about three to four minutes. Okay, so the, the residual heat that's in the potato is going to warm through the butter and allow it to melt. Let's just relax and get the best possible results. So the potatoes have been resting. Okay, so we've, we've cooked them for about two minutes, we've steamed them in two minutes, we've turned the heat off, lid on, butter in, and let that rest. Now, for the big reveal. Now, as the butter is melting, hand on top and move it in a circular motion. And what that does is it enrobes each piece of potato in that fantastic butter. And look at that, that's what you want. Through the butter is obviously that fantastic Induya sausage. Spicy, hot, tasty. But we've also supplemented that with lovely lemon zest, which brings it a little bit of acidity to it, some herbs, a fantastic potato dish. Not your average boiled potatoes. Those little bits of butter and do your sausage. Check it out. It's a brilliant thing. When I went to Italy, they have the do your sausage in most corner shops and it drips, the oil drips, because it's, it's a spreadable chorizo almost. And uh, I thought, oh, not for me. Only when I've came home, I've been able to see it for what it is, an incredible invention. Oh my goodness, look at that. So that's all the stuff that you want at the bottom. All those little solids, beautiful stuff. Your house should be filled with this intoxicating aroma. That there, all that really needs right now is a tiny bit of salt. And there you have your potatoes and then do your butter.
So another signature of the Chateau X is how we treat our vegetables and how we elevate them to a real high standard, 10 out of 10. We treat our vegetables in the exact same manner as we treat our piece of meat. With this, these carrots are whole. They're sand carrots grown in sand, so they have a superior flavour. They struggle to grow, so they have a superior flavour. We've cooked them slowly in beef dripping, and then coated them in the tops of the carrot pesto. So the, the carrots grow, if you can imagine Bugs Bunny, a big, big green uh, top. We blitz that and make a pesto out of that. And we've coated the carrots in that pesto. Now, all you really have to do is heat them through in the oven. They actually taste fantastic as they are, but again, we are not content with everything tastes okay. We want to take it to the highest level possible. This is a special occasion, it's a special dinner. Um, and that is ready for the oven. They will only take about 10 minutes in a medium high heat oven, okay? Straight in. And that's the carrots. So the carrots have been in the oven. We know they're hot, we know they're ready. We're ready to take them out. Get your serving plate. I'm gonna serve them in a little bowl. I want, I want to see them. We've taken a great deal of time and effort on these carrots. And now it's, now it's time to give them the center stage. So in your bowl, you can see that pesto is outstanding. The carrot tops, if you've never tried them, they always taste like a herb, but they're obviously not. We put a little bit of chervil through this as well. Look at that. That is brilliant. So there you have your carrots cooked in beef dripping, tossed with a carrot top pesto. Enjoy. So we were in for a real treat. Everybody loves a chocolate fondant. And we have a chocolate orange fondant. Now there's nothing to be scared of here. What we're going to do is we're going to treat it very, very simply. We've taken everything, all the hard work out of it. And we're going to place it into the oven for an exact amount of time. These take 12 minutes. All we have to do is carefully remove the film from the top. We have these little tins, okay? So the mix is in the middle. The orange chocolate is in the centre of this. We want to place it flat side down onto our oven trays into the middle of the oven, okay? And the oven is set for 180 degrees, okay? So with the fondants within there, you'll find this little bag of orange compote. This is orange zest and orange flesh cooked down and seasoned up with a little bit of sugar. It's, it goes fantastically well with the chocolate orange. And just a little chef trick, okay? What we're gonna do is we're gonna transfer it into a little bowl so that we can obtain a nice shape when we quenelle it, okay? You don't have to do this. It doesn't add anything to the flavor, but for the experience, a restaurant quality meal at home, this is exactly what we're after. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna decorate the plate with that incredible zesty orange compote. So a little chef's trick is to take the compote and two spoons. Two spoons that should be exactly the same. What we're gonna do is called a quenelle. I know you've seen this in many restaurants or in many pictures. Pictures of food are everywhere these days. So take some of it. What you want to do is right between two. Press, press, press. Let's put it into a presentable shape to serve beside our chocolate fondant. Now that's the chocolate fondants, okay? A little tap shows me that they are ready, okay? We remove the hot tray. Now these little tins are hot, you can, my fingers are almost domestos because I, I cook so much, but you can use a little uh, tea towel for this, okay? So what I like to do, to ensure that these bad boys come out properly, just turn on a spoon, just round the edge here. It's not necessary. And tip the chocolate fondant straight onto the plate, lift up the tin, and that there is our chocolate and orange fondant. As you can see, incredible orange chocolate through it. That there is a dish to be proud of. So guys, please enjoy our April offering from Surf and Turf. It really is a cracking dinner. Enjoy.